Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm doing a quick tutorial on how to make a basic idle animation for Goldsock Half-Life 1. So the first program you're going to need is Blender. Um, Blender is a nice free modeling and animating uh, software. I'm not going to go extensively into the controls of Blender. I'm just going to say the very basic things you need. Um, because the, using the editor itself is is complicated. There are a lot of good tutorials on how to move the camera around and use things within Blender um, out there. So if you just look on YouTube, you'll find tutorials for that. It won't take you long to get started. Uh, so here we have a new file in Blender where you would start with this cube, a camera, and a light source. Uh, but for this, those can actually be deleted. So you just hit X, you control select, uh, sorry, not control, you um, drag and select and hit X to delete those. Uh, and that's what I would do if I were opening a new file. Now, when you have Blender, the things you're going to need in order to work with gold sock models is a source engine or gold sock um, plugin. It's basically a community made plugin that allows you to import SMD files. And SMD files are like the uh, raw files you use for models in Half Life. Um, so that can be downloaded with a link I've got in the description and install it as you uh, would install any other Blender plugin. Again, there's people out there that can just tell you it's quite simple. Um, it's basically you just import the file into Blender um, by clicking it in your list of enabled plugins and then it will work from then on. Um, once you've got that, you're able to import SMDs into Blender. However, we still need a way to decompile and compile models. For that, you need a program called Crowbar, which I will also link in the description. Um, and once you've set that up, you'll be able to decompile the original models from your copy of Half-Life into a form that you can work with in Blender. Once you've done this, um, I, I should add, we're gonna be working with the scientist model today um, because it's nice and simple to work with. It's the first one I started off with. So I'm gonna start the process from the beginning I just realized to import this because I'm doing it from scratch. We need to import the SMDs. This is how we use our plugin. We go file import source engine SMD. Um, it says source engine, but it's it's used for gold circ this version as well. Uh, gold SRC, whatever you want to call it, but I just call it gold circ. Um, so if we go to the D drive. Scientist HD new. Right, you'll see all these different files once you've decompiled it. So you want to click once on Psi Headless Body and then hold control for another file and click on any one of the scientist heads. I prefer Einstein as a generic one. So you just need the body SMD and the head SMD. You don't want to open scientist.qc or the needle or any other attachments of the model. Um, these two files are like the basic reference of the model and so opening those will uh, basically open the model without any animations or anything and won't uh, sometimes um, when you decompile the animations they won't work correctly in Blender so you don't want to import any more than you need to um, similarly the scientist.qc is actually the model um, that basically it's like the file that contains all the model data and the animation data so we're going to ignore that and we're just going to open these two smds so we click import and now we have our scientist standing here so i'm using middle mouse to rotate the camera and then shift and middle mouse to like pan the camera up and down and then scroll to zoom in and out so we can see our basic scientist model now and it's highlighting there's three parts the head and his tag which are one part you can see we can move those around, but we don't want to. The body, and then his overall skeleton, which will move his body as we move it. You can see if we move that out here and then move the skeleton, the whole thing is messed up. So once that's imported, we can see all the parts over in our scene collection. And we have our basic scientist. So we're going to prep this scientist for animating. Um, and ignore the colors and everything the textures obviously don't show up here so it's not a big deal i wonder if we if we render in uh render in real time 
they still won't show up actually because it's not using like the game will draw on the QC to load textures for the scientist whereas Blender doesn't do that it just gives like this generic model so now that we have the model here we're going to prep him for animating so you want to click the skeleton first of all and you have to click the skeleton to make this work and then you hold control and press tab this will take us from edit mode to pose mode once you're in pose mode you can see the skeleton highlighted now if we wanted to drag him around now it's not going to work very well because all the bones aren't connected so if i press g to move his hand for example it will just literally move his hand and stretch everything which we don't want so i right click to cancel that um, that can be useful for certain effects like if you're trying to uh, hide his head for some reason you can literally drag his head out of frame it looks like he's been you know like had his head chopped off or something but we don't want that um, and you can see certain things will work like rotating his head with the R key and dragging the mouse because that one bone controls his whole head these things are called bones obviously they're part of the skeleton so what we're going to do is link his hand to his arm in such a way that when I move his hand his whole arm will move in a more natural way it makes it a lot easier to animate so we take the mouse over to this side uh, to this panel where it says bone constraint properties click it click add bone constraint and tracking inverse kinematics uh, now we want the like three bones connected to his hand to work so you up the chain length to three and don't touch anything else and now when I move his hand his entire arm will move in a much more natural manner you have to be careful you don't go crazy and like move it too much but if you just move it slowly we're now able to animate his arm and with different views we can animate it in different directions so now i'm going to repeat that process for his other hand and his feet and i'll probably skip ahead because you don't need to see me repeat everything right um we're back now i've done his feet with the same procedure and his other hand and the one thing I haven't done is his neck so you want to make sure you don't select the mouth bone or any other bone in the head you want to select the head bone just at the back it's normally called bipod one head for all of the half-life models I think that's the one we're going to add the inverse <coughs> the inverse kinematics to so that's the one we're going to add the inverse kinematics to now uh, when I press G now you'll see it controls like his whole body now obviously you know you don't want something like that when you're animating so you would probably hit G and then hold shift just to move it very slightly and that's just good for when you want to move his whole body if we want to do other things we can just move his uh, spine around um, let's see we will also stick inverse kinematics on his spine I can't remember which part of the spine I normally put them on. We'll try this. Yeah, see, that's too much. If you have, uh, yeah, we don't want that, in fact. If you have uh, too much inverse kinematics, we'll cancel that. You can mess things up. So instead, we'll put it on this part of the spine up the top. And we'll give it a chain length three. No, nope, that's not what we want. In fact, I'm not sure I actually bothered putting inverse kinematics on the spine um, ah that's it I normally don't move the spine you just rotate it if you just rotate the spine it works absolutely fine so we're not going to bother don't do inverse kinematics on the spine just do the head bone at the back the hands and the feet that's all you need and everything else can be controlled easily so what I would now do is now that I have this set up there's one other thing to check for the scientist model and sometimes it doesn't decompile properly so we go control tab and go back to object mode um, and then we basically want to select the skeleton again and press tab without control to go to edit mode and then what you want to do is open this panel here by clicking this tiny little button here like there's a little arrow uh, and this will come up with a transform and this lists the properties of that bone like we can select the bones now that tell us the properties and you'll notice with a scientist model that's just been decompiled it doesn't show with this one because I've already fixed the problem but sometimes his feet will have a very strange roll value here 
and you want to correct that so it's the same as the other foot and the knees and everything because otherwise you'll find you compile your animation and his foot will be sort of bent over into his leg in a really stupid way <clears throat> it's like a glitch so you want to make sure that doesn't happen and fix that and before before you go to this next step of saving it so if we hit tab again to come out of that because I'm, I don't need to fix it in my example here now this is ready what I would personally do is save as and then I would go to a separate folder with my scientist I would name it scientist HD and I would save this as something like uh, scientist HD IK or scientist HD base because this is the thing you're pretty much going to be doing all your animations from now that you've fixed his his limbs to work like you want them to so once you've got that saved you are finished with the first task which is setting up your environment to make animations so I'm going to skip ahead now and open up my own personal version of my uh, starting scientist so this is my personal version of my starting scientist with some basic geometry I added in Blender this won't show up when you're animating but it's useful for um, giving you context of what your level is going to look like around him so for example one of my animations where I have a dead scientist get thrown over the railing I wanted him to land on the floor and I needed a railing to animate around so I simply made these shapes and then animated around it there's also a ceiling above him because I was making another animation where he falls through a ceiling um, and I needed the rough height so that it would be correct in the game we're just going to make a very simple looping idle animation which should be quite easy um, so here's our scientist so I'll go through what I'm doing you want to click on his skeleton and hit control tab to enter pose mode which says here and now basically we're going to have a scientist lean against a wall actually I'm going to create the wall first so uh, shift a it's been a while since I've actually modeled in blender so I have to remember myself you want to go shift a to get them uh, and when you're in object mode to get the mesh menu up and then we want a cube this will create a very small cube because the scientist is a huge scale for some reason we're going to hit s on the cube that's just popped up beneath his feet and hit z to scale it in the z axis and we're going to keep doing that and just scale it with the mouse there we go then we're going to hit g uh, x move it and we're going to s y scale it outwards There we go, we now have a wall next to our scientist, a very basic wall, but that's all we need. So now we are going to go back to the skeleton, control uh, tab, press A to select all, and then down the bottom of your layout window, um, I think by default this is like closed. There's like, yeah, it looks like this normally. You want to click on this bit, drag upwards. This will give you a keyframe window down the bottom. This is called keyframe window. This is used for animations, uh, which go through certain frames. <clears throat> and the keyframe, personally, I, I don't really use the animation tab here. I use the keyframe tab down the bottom to control the animation and what it's doing. So by default, he's looking in this direction. So when we place him down in the hammer editor, like this will be zero degrees. So that's another important point of reference when you're making an animation, when it comes to putting your scripted sequences in hammer in the correct place. You want to know that this is zero degrees straight ahead. Um, but for now, that's just something we need to know. So I'm going to make him lean up against this wall and I'm just going to have him standing, leaning on the wall, being idle. So first thing, 30 frames. Um, we're recording this animation at 24 frames per second. That's the default so i want this animation to be longer than 30 frames so i'm just going to put it as 60. so i change this by clicking on where it says end over here and i i click that and just type 60. Uh, and then the key you can see the keyframe window the length of the animation is increased to 60 frames but at the moment nothing's happening because he's just standing there in a default pose so what we're going to do is hit a to make sure you've selected all of your bones then hit i and hit lock rot this will create a keyframe which saves the location and rotation of all of these bones um, in fact I'm just gonna make one change I'm gonna go 
tab back to object mode, move this wall in slightly towards him. Because there's no need for it to be far away because the uh, position of the scientist relative to the wall will be controlled by our placement of the wall in hammer. So there we go, and we might move the wall as we make the animation, we'll see. But anyway. Uh, now we want to go back to... Oops. Even I'm making mistakes here. I want to go back to pose mode. There we go. So I select my skeleton, hit control tab again. So a scientist is standing on our makeshift floor. He's got a fake wall next to him. And we have a keyframe of him doing nothing. So how do we make this into an animation? Well, now that we have our keyframe set up at frame zero, so right from the beginning of the animation, he's going to be standing here staring into space along the axis zero inside the editor. So what we're going to do is now adjust his pose so that he is leaning on this wall. So I'm going to hit R while having everything selected and get the right axis. Uh, y, the Y axis. And then I'm just going to drag him. I'm going to hit control because it makes it easier. And you can see at the top that now does this in five degree intervals, which makes it a lot cleaner and easier when you're rotating characters to know what's going on. So holding control, I will rotate him 10 degrees. Great. So it doesn't look very lifelike, but that's how he's leaning now. So with everything still selected, I'm just going to move him a tiny bit closer to the wall, I think. I've tried to minimize the amount I'm moving the scientist. This is why I moved the wall closer, because I don't want the scripted sequence to be placed like where the mouse is. But my scientist is actually like 10 feet to the left, because that can really confuse you when you're making a map. Um, your scientist won't be aligned when he's animated with the actual thing in the map. And then you end up moving scripted sequences around everywhere and it can get really confusing. So always try and keep your scientist close to where he starts off in the animation. So now we have him leaning like this. I'm going to select his hand and just move his hand. Now I'm going to swap. So if you press numpad one, you get this view. Numpad three, you get this view. Control, you get the opposite. That's a useful thing to do when you're trying to precisely animate things. So I just want to move his hand very carefully in this direction. I mean, this animation probably won't look very good actually because I'm just rushing it to make a point, but uh, let's see, how do we want him against this wall? Uh, in fact, let's lean him back a little bit this way again. Oops. Yep, just make him lean ever so slightly and put his hand up a bit. See, now it seems that we actually need him slightly further from the wall. There we go. And his hand doesn't look particularly natural, but at the moment we're not particularly worried. So I'm just rotating the camera and moving his hand. There we are. And now because his hand is facing the wrong way, you can see his fingers are like facing the wrong way. I hit rotate. Uh, y? No, X, sorry. Actually, no, I can't rotate his hand bone there. Uh, how would I normally sort this? I might just rotate, free rotate. I could rotate his arm actually. Normally I would just rotate the whole scientist model. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to do that. Actually, I will. I will. Why not? It's slightly easier. So to fix this, I'm going to gently rotate the whole scientist model because it will just look better. Have him like this and we'll move his arm back put it like this against the wall so this next part's not very useful it's just going to be me moving the scientist around to conform better to the animation that I want him leaning against the wall so I'm going to skip ahead um, all I'm going to be doing is manipulating things by pressing G and dragging them around or pressing R and dragging them around that's basically what I've been doing the whole time so uh, if you'll just be working along to this, doing your animation the same, for example, if you want to rotate his head, just select the head bone and hit R and rotate. And if you want to do along a certain axis, just hit R and Z or R and X or R and Y. That's how you'll rotate. Um, 
just make sure you don't click anything down here because it will reset the animation because we haven't saved any of this data yet. So you can see I've been keeping quiet, but I've just been animating the scientist. Now this, you know, this is not a pose I would put inside the game. It looks like he's, you know, maybe he's injured or something. He's leaning really heavily on the wall. It looks kind of unnatural. I was looking for a more natural pose. I mean, we could extend. I think if we extend his arm up a bit and then bring him in a little bit, it'll look a bit more normal. He's also leaning a bit too heavily. There we go. And this is like how you'll be just continually adjusting your animation so that it looks a bit more natural and a bit less weird. Because, you know, these things have a tendency to look artificial. His arm there looks overextended. I mean, I've done a similar animation with a marine that looks much better than this because I just took like 20 minutes to actually make it look good. But, you know, as a very basic example, this will teach you very simply how to make your animation. So. I'm not going to stress over how it looks, to be honest. Um, so his hand will go. Uh, we'll put his hand on his hip as if he's just chilling out. For whatever reason. Looking judgmental for some reason. Uh, so. And also rotate his spine so he's forward a little bit because it looked like he was leaning over backwards so this is a very basic animation now that we've got the pose sorted that i want him to be in at the start uh, we'll just check his tie is in the correct place it looks fine i've left it as default we're going to press a to select all the bones i and then lock rut the animation now when we press A again to select all the bones, you can see the yellow keyframe. And the animation now is frozen with him like this. So this is how he starts out. Now, to make the animation loop as an idle animation is very simple. We select all the bones. We select by clicking on the yellow keyframe, the keyframe. Then we click and drag this all the way to 60 frames. Click off, paste. The animation now loops. I've hit spacebar to play the animation. This is our animation. Now this can be an idle animation now, except obviously he has absolutely no movement and looks like a statue, and this is not particularly good, is it? Um, maybe if he was like a dead body, this would do for an animation, but he's not supposed to be dead, he's supposed to just be leaning against a wall for whatever reason. So we're gonna change this. Pause by pressing space. Now, um, there's all kinds of ways you can do this, and an idle animation could be as long as you want. I don't like to make them too long, um, but at the same time, you don't want an idle animation that's so short it's really obvious that it's looping. Um, I mean, it doesn't make a massive deal. Like most of the Half-Life idle animations are just a couple of seconds long and you don't really pay attention to the fact they're looping. But for example, if we move his head around really obviously, then our idle animation, he'll be going like this. And that will just look really weird because it's like, unless you want him to be shaking his head, it doesn't look natural. We just want like he's just standing here not doing much so we want a very minute animation of him breathing or something so an I ideal thing would just be 
rotating his spine like a very small amount and then keeping his hand in like roughly the same position it was at and then that would be like the breath animation or whatever so you know that's what the sort of thing we want so what i'm going to do is put 30 frames in in the halfway point of our animation i'm going to select everything now we're going to manipulate him slightly so he looks slightly different so uh there's probably a cleverer way of keeping his hand in the same place i just do it manually so it could look a bit weird you've got to be careful with things like that um we're going to click his spine and just rotate along the y-axis just oh sorry the x-axis very small amount perhaps even smaller actually r x hold shift to make it even smaller there you go and it doesn't really matter if his hand moves slightly because it just looks natural he, he's just moving his hand ever so slightly so against the wall while he's leaning on it so it's not going to matter and we're just going to move his hand here ever so slightly And we will also move his head ever so slightly. And forward ever so slightly. Using the R and then X, Y, or Z, and then holding shift and rotating. I mean, to be honest, I might have even underdone that. Um, you might want him to move his head a little bit more than that. And we'll also have him just ever so slightly move his foot like that. And then I hit A, hit I, and hit lock rot again. And now instead of having a straight line because these are all the same, we have three different keyframes. Now, as you play the animation, it will play from the state where he is just standing idle to the state where he is moved at 30 frames. And then because we copy pasted the first frame to 60 frames, the next 30 frames will just be him going back to the uh, original starting point and this creates a loop so now when we play the animation um, I'm just gonna get rid of the skeleton like that so it's a bit clearer when I play it you can see he moves ever so slightly now this looks a lot more human although because it's only 60 frames it's very obvious it's looping he now looks like he's breathing fairly heavily while leaning on the wall maybe he's had too much to drink I don't know so there's our scientist a very simple idle animation and uh, not bad at all actually quite happy with that so now that that works the next step is how do we get this into the game well the answer for that is uh, you want to first of all go file save as and save this animation as something unique so i normally preface mine with a letter i put n for new um, you don't have to do this it just helps me when i'm looking at the animation later uh, so just put whatever you want, put your name or put whatever the name your mod is or whatever before the animation. I put N and then I'm going to put scientist, lean wall, tutorial, idle. Um, in fact, I'm just going to make it shorter so it's easier. N, Psi, Tut, Lean, Idle. There you go. So I now know what this animation is. Click save. That will save the Blender file. So if you ever want to edit this animation again, you can just go file open, open the Blender file, and this will come up. And then you can work with your keyframes. Your keyframes obviously won't be visible until you click your skeleton, control tab to pose, and then hit A, and your keyframes will appear once you've selected everything. So now that we have that done, we want to go animation in this tab up the top. Uh, you want to click this and go to action editor because normally it will be on dope sheet which I think on the dope sheet you can edit different keyframes here but I prefer to use the other layout screen so action and then over here on the right you can see we've got cube one SMD we don't want that untick that so uh, actually this may be on something different on yours so say it's on this to default you want to go down to this scene properties where you have the different um, shapes click it and then under source engine export which is enabled by that plugin that you should have the SMD plugin you want to untick everything except for whatever this one here is called so we're going to click in the middle here where my mouse is click on this this is the name of your animation and we're going to rename it the same as the file nsi tut lean idle there we go enter you can see the name has changed down here so say this is all unticked we don't want 
the cube or any of this rubbish in our animation we just want the animation we've just made so the keyframe data is all saved in this SMD we click the tick you want to check that it's exporting as SMD you want to check the target engine is gold circ and not source because that will not work you need to make sure it's gold circ um, and that's everything I think then you want to go to export and click the folder and we know it's going in our scientist HD folder which is absolutely fine so I'm happy with that I'm gonna click export and you don't want scene export you just want anims inside type lean idle or whatever you've called your animation click that one file exported in 0.3 seconds so that's our animation exported to SMD format it is now ready to go into the game but we need to now compile our model and put it into the game so I will quickly show how to do that next so now that we've compiled our SMD file inside blender um, it's basically locked our animation into this text file in which basically I've opened this in notepad inside tut lean idle it's inside the same folder we exported it to when opened we can see that basically this text file has the position of all of the different bones and joints and over each frame it lists the position of every single joint the rotation values and everything and it's all done thank god we don't have to do this ourselves blender does it all for us and or rather the uh, the source tools plugin does it for us basically the whole animation is in text form inside this notepad file or SMD file I should say sorry but opened in notepad so I'm going to copy that file from wherever I exported it to I'm going to go to my decompiled scientist uh, folder you can see all the different textures here and the, here's the uh, SMDs like the headless body and the Einstein head that we based it off and our scientist QC so that folder we're going to go inside scientist anims this will have all of the default half-life animations in there are some custom ones I've already added as well uh, from my previous modding but I'm going to paste the new SMD into this animation folder so we have inside tut lean idle inside this folder now we go to the main folder again we go to scientist.qc and you want to open this in notepad and if it doesn't already open in notepad you right click you click open with and you basically select notepad as the uh, program to do this with so inside the QC is all the data that makes up inside half-life its knowledge of what the model is and basically this is used by crowbar or whatever compile tool you have to compile your model into a dot model file which is be what you started with when you decompiled your file um, and the dot model file contains all the QC all the textures and everything that the game needs to know about the model so inside here uh, I've actually modified this so ignore some of this actually no I think this is default I've modified a different one ignore me um, but basically this has the body group of the model uh, <clears throat> the body group of the model the heads of the model any other stuff and stuff like skin families so uh, that will tell the game for example when it picks Luther which is like Eli Vance's head from Half-Life 2 basically that character the black scientist it will give him the black hands to go with his face uh, and similarly when it picks the white scientist it will pick the white hands and things like that so it just matches the skin textures up with whatever the model is the bit we're actually interested in is this section here where it says uh, dollar sign sequences now this is where the model lists all of its animation data and you can see these are the original half-life ones so we've got the running animations the flinching animations all the different scripted sequences like death animations and things like that um, what we need to do to make our model recognize our new animation is add a new sequence now this is actually quite simple it's not actually that complicated so you can see here are custom ones I've already add, added in the past uh, so inside dumped idle blah 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 all of this stuff is stuff that I've added so I want to add a new one so for the sake of helping you because you're not going to have any of the ones I've added we would select say Neil this sequence is one of the original Half-Life ones now you might find in your file it's laid out differently but you want to select everything from the dollar sign all the way to the final bracket 
That is that entire instruction for that animation. We're going to copy that with Control C. We're going to scroll to the bottom of you know wherever the end of the file is and hit Enter, and then paste. And this will add. You should have a close bracket above and a close bracket at the end. And then in the middle, you'll have dollar sign sequence whatever you copied. So you want to then click within the quotation marks and you want to put in the name of your new animation, which I believe for us was Ensai Tut Lean Idle. Now I'm going to check that. Yep, that's fine. And you want to make sure the capitalization is the same. So copy this new title you've given the animation. Go down to the next line and replace the name here as well on the end. There you are. And change the FPS to 24 because that's what we made it in Blender so we want it to sync up. Then hit enter and hit tab and put loop. Just type loop because this is going to be a looping animation. If you don't do that the animation won't loop in the game. It won't recognize that it has to keep playing it. So once that's done press Control S to save the file. We now have our scientist QC prepared, we now have our animation prepared. So what we need to do now is go to Crowbar, wherever you have it installed. So I have it installed uh, in this separate folder. You then want to go to the Compile tab at the top of Crowbar. Go to your folder, wherever it is where you've put your animation and select scientist QC. We then want to go to the output folder. And in my case, I mean, this is wherever you want to put the folder. So in my case, I'm going to put it in here. This will do. I'm quite happy with that. And then click compile. Now, if everything's gone correctly, like it seems to have here, you will find that you don't get any errors. Uh, we can then go to the folder, compiled models. You can see the time is the current time. Oh, these are the old ones, we'll delete those. Uh, here's our new folder with our, at this exact time, the scientist model was compiled. Now all of these different numbers are different variants of the model. You don't really need to worry about those. They will need to go in the game folder. But at the moment, the, the main one that we want to open is this. So we want Jed's Half-Life Model Viewer. This is another very useful app that will be in the description. And you want to load the model, navigate to that same folder, which you had your original uh, model in that you've just compiled. And we're going to open it up. And I've had this problem with the model view lately where it's all laggy. It doesn't really look like this, the animation. I'm not sure what's causing this problem. I might have to reinstall the model viewer. But normally you should get a nice fluid animation of like there's the Half-Life walking animation. And when you click the animations, you will now find your new one is listed right down the bottom. And there we have it. When we click it, we see the animation of him leaning on the wall. Obviously the wall is not there because it was just in Blender. So there is our scientist, and despite the fact we use the Einstein head because of the way the model is configured, we can actually pick like any head we want. So we can stick Einstein on there, we can have Luther, we can have Slick, we can have Walter. All of those work perfectly fine. Ah, see, you can see there is a minor glitch for animation. I mentioned earlier, I wasn't sure if the tie was where it should be. Um, you can find that when you rotate the spine, the tie will go into the uh, body. That's very simple to fix. So if you wanted to fix that in your animation, you would just go back and edit the keyframe. So the tie, like you could drag the tie forward. So it was just hanging down. That will be fixed in like two minutes, like super easy, but I'm not gonna bother because this is a tutorial. So yeah, there we have him leaning against the wall for whatever reason. So now all we need to do is put this model into the game. So there are a whole bunch of ways to do that. Um, I'm not going to go over all of them, but basically very simply, you now have the model files ready. You just need to copy those into the mod folder of your choice. So there are loads of tutorials on how to create a mod folder. If people want that tutorial, I will make it. But basically you create a mod folder inside your Half-Life directory with a model folder in it, and you can put these models in. And it's quite clever, really. The game will automatically realize, because this is named Scientist, 
that it will replace Valve's default scientist model with this without you having to do any coding or anything. So when your mod loads, this animation will be available as long as the scientist model is inside the mod folder. So you can just distribute your mod folder with all the models in it and people will be able to see these animations without having to do anything to their game or anything. It will just automatically go, okay, there's the scientist model and here's this new animation in Hammer that's been called on. Uh, sorry, not in Hammer, in the BSP file of your map. It's been called on to have him leaning on the wall, job done. So that's all ready to go. In my case, I'm just going to very simply copy this uh, entire load of models. So I'm in my root Half-Life folder, and then I just go to my mod, which will be BMDH2 for this. Uh, if you want to see some of my work, check out Black Mesa Jewel Hazard on TWHL.com. This is what this folder is actually for. Um, I made a, a small map pack with custom animations there that you might enjoy. So we now have the new scientist model in here, along with a bunch of other custom models, um, but they're irrelevant for this. So I'm going to design a very simple level now off screen and show you what the animation looks like in game. I'm inside a test environment I built previously, a very, very simple level, just a couple of boxes uh, and my custom textures on the wall that you're probably going to be familiar with from my other video, if you've watched any of my other videos. Um, and I'm just going through very quickly the process of getting our animation into the game. So I've placed down a scientist. Uh, let's get rid of these random decals on the floor. They're always an absolute pain to select. So we're going to get rid of those just so it neatens it up. I've placed a scientist. Uh, I'm going to name him Lean Sai just for the simplicity of it and he's going to be luther just for the hell of it as well let's illustrate this gag him make him pre-disaster make him a prisoner i do that when um i don't want my entities talking or making any noise i just want him leaning there quietly and that's what we need to do so we place our scripted sequence it down target monster we want to be lean side we want to be target He's muddled up because I've rotated stuff so much and moved it around it ends up getting confusing uh, but anyway along this axis facing this wall he's just gonna be standing there leaning so alternatively um, just a note if we wanted to make the scientist non-solid we could make him a monster generic entity instead of a scientist and click non-solid and this will set the animation up exactly the same scientist he would have to be a monster scientist anyway so it doesn't matter he can be wherever you want because he's going to instantly like a second or two after the map loads it's going to load the animations and he'll teleport into the animation so we're going to have him over here and we're just going to position this up against the wall we're going to save the map and we're going to compile the map and then I'm going to go into the game uh, or my mod version of the game and run this map and show you the animation so here we go, we're inside the test map again, ignore these random animations. Here's our new scientist, you can see I've already moved him from over here because I don't know why I put him over there, he's in the wrong spot. Um, you can see he's slightly off the wall here, that's something you could just correct by moving his hand in the animation and compiling it again, but really, like, that's up to Half-Life 1 standards, no one really looks that closely. 
We have the correct skin of Luther. Uh, we could have used any of the other scientists. And we can see him breathing like a regular human would. So it's a convincing idle animation. The only glitch we still have is his tie. And again, that's something you could clean up in two minutes of uh, editing in Blender. So I hope this tutorial was very useful. There's how to give a very simple idle animation to your scientist. You can do the same for any uh, any NPC. We could have just made his legs move a little more maybe, but adding too much movement looks terrible, whereas adding this amount looks fine. I mean, your player's not going to be crawling around staring at people's feet anyway. So there we have it. There's our scientist already in the game. This can be put into any mod that you make, and uh, you can make your idle animations as interesting as you want. You could have him sort of miming talking to someone you could have him uh dead on the floor or injured that's another type of idle animation i've done a very simple death idle animation over here for this uh security guard who's obviously been reskinned as well um and in the next tutorial if people will be interested i will show you how to make action animations and how to transition from an idle animation like this into a standard animation ready for your npc to walk around and do other things so uh hope this was handy if you'd like to see my work again check out black mesa jewel hazard it was the co it's on the uh, competition page of twhl the whole half-life website it's for the buddy competition and i'm um, happily actually won that competition the first one i've entered so i was very happy with that that's a three map level featuring custom animations like this and you can see them in practice